Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Collier and I am the teacher librarian here at Mark Twain Elementary, part of the Iowa City Community School District. Um, I hope that this short, um, smart notebook uh, training session will help you to um, feel comfortable creating and using um, the technique that I present today in your classroom on your smart board interactive whiteboard. Um, today's focus will be on creating and using hide and reveal activities in your classroom. Um, if you want detailed instructions on how to do this, you can look in your learner workbook starting on page 41. Also feel free to ask questions during the session if at any time that would help to clarify something for you. Um, I am going to start by clicking on the forward arrow um, to get to the next page of this notebook file. Another way for me to get to the next page is if I click on the page sorter tab at the top there, um, it will give me thumbnails of all the pages and then I can easily navigate to any page in the notebook file that I want to be at. Um, there's also this auto hide box and that currently is checked. What that means is that I, when I'm ready to um, hide those thumbnails, I can tap anywhere in the workspace and those will disappear. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the focus of this training session then is on using the hide and reveal technique. Um, there are three different methods for doing this kind of activity. Um, the first called move and reveal, the second one order and reveal, and last um, erase and reveal. They're all very appropriately named as you will see. So we have an example here. There's a question posed, where is Tutat Commons tomb? Um, this will just give you a very brief demonstration of how kind of each one of these um, hide and reveal techniques work. So, the first one involves um, the technique or the method of um, move and reveal. So, um, what has happened here is that the text was typed on the page in a color that contrasts with the background, the white background. But then, an uh, object larger than the text has been created, in this case, this black rectangle and it is put over the text to hide it and all we need to do to reveal then the answer is to move that object. The Valley of the Kings is hiding right under there. Um, the next method is shown here, order and reveal. In order and reveal, um, it's a little bit more complicated. Back to move and reveal, you need to type the text, create an object to cover it, and then move the object in order to reveal it. Order and reveal gets a little more complicated. There's an extra step there. It involves using color and order, um, or the order of the objects, in order to um, hide your answer and then obviously eventually reveal your answer. So in this case, the text is typed in the same color as the background, in this case white on white, and then um, an object is created, and I'm just going to use that black rectangle again, but you use order, you kind of um, manipulate the order of the objects so that when you move that black rectangle, um, what appears to be over the text, it's actually going in between the text and the background, so kind of behind the text but before the background. So to reveal the answer, in this case I take that object and I move it so that it goes in between the two and then all of a sudden that white text on the white background shows up because it has now a black background. Put that back up there. Um, the last uh, method for hide and reveal is erase and reveal. And in this technique, again, there are three steps. A little bit simpler than order and reveal. You type the text in a color that contrasts with the background. You then um, cover the text with digital ink in the same color as the background and in order to reveal it you pick up the eraser and erase that digital ink revealing that answer underneath. I'm just going to go over here and undo that erasing so that the example page is back where it started. Um, moving forward again, um, I would like to show um, in a little more detail an example of how I might use um, 
hi a hide and reveal technique, in this case specifically erase and reveal in a library lesson that I might use with, say, fourth graders. Um, gathering as much information as one can from the spine label of a book is a skill that we emphasize in our library lessons. And so in front of you, you see a page that has uh, 10 spine labels on it with the question at the top, would you expect to find the books with these spine labels in the fiction or nonfiction sections of our library? Um, so far, under many of the spine labels, I have the answer already there. All the fiction ones are there, and then I have one of the nonfictions there. I wanted to not have it um, all the way ready because I wanted to show you kind of a quick, efficient way to um, create this so that you can keep the font style and size and color and all of that business under each one without having to adjust it each time. So in order to get the answer nonfiction under the remaining spine labels, I'm going to click on that word nonfiction. I'm going to um, click on the object tool menu, uh, drop down menu, sorry, and I'm going to click infinite cloner. What that enables me to do is to just tap on that word nonfiction and drag clones of it wherever else I want on the page. So I need the word nonfiction here. And I need the word nonfiction down here, and here, and here. All right. Um, before I go any further, what I want to do is I want to safeguard against myself or students moving anything that's on this page right now accidentally. So I'm going to go up here in the corner, and I'm going to marquee select everything on this page. And I'm going to lock everything. Oops, it's already locked. I'm going to try that again. All right, I'm going to lock it in place so that everything now should be not moving around. Um, the last thing that I need to do in preparation before I present this with students is that I need to hide all these answers. So I'm going to go down at the bottom to the um, pen tool, which is right down here in the contextual toolbar. It has three little pens there. And I'm going to choose that um, option. Then I need to do two things before I can draw. I need to choose a color. I would like the color to be the same color as the background, so I'm going to choose white. And I need to choose a line style. And because I just want a nice thick line um, to quickly cover those answers, I'm going to choose that bold, um, thick line. And then if I go up here, I should be able to swipe across or draw over each of those answers to hide them. Now I'm ready to present this activity to students. Um, so what I would do is obviously direct students over to the far left, and I would say, looking at this spine label with an E-C-A-R, first of all, what does that tell you about this book? Um, what do you know about the author? And then um, give them some think time to decide fiction or nonfiction. Then I could call on a student to come right up, use the eraser, erase that digital ink to reveal that answer fiction, and so on throughout this entire um, activity. Um, this makes this activity interactive. It makes it, uh, get, it allows students to have time to think in between each one. Um, and so I, I think that it would be kind of a nice different way to present this information to students. Um, I hope this demonstration of how to create a hide and reveal uh, technique um, specifically, we used Erase and Reveal. Um, it's helpful to you as you explore ways to use this in your classroom. As you can see, it's fairly simple to create and use, and I think that it could be used in almost every, every subject area, every grade level. Um, and if you have any questions, please, please let me know. And if you get in there and you get started and you, um, you get stuck or you're not sure what to do, please um, 
let me know and I'd be happy to come into your classroom and help you. Thanks.